This episode exposed the fraudsters, the liars, the manipulators, the con artists, and all things clear. Huh? What? You, you going in hard like that already? Stop me when I'm lying. Can't do it. Welcome to Cliff Alerts. Today we're going to be talking about Lifetime Network's reality-based TV series, Married at First Sight. Season number 17, episode number 20, Decision Day. We're expounding the virtues of Cameron. And she said that, you know, he's a great guy. When they're together, they laugh and all this other yakety, yakety, yak. Because that's how I'm, I'm, I'm hearing her at this point. But. But but then she says that he has problems opening up. Mm -hmm. And she feels sad. At the the end of her marriage, she also but she's grateful. She also said that uh, their relationship lacked the romance that she felt like she needed from him. Uh -huh. Cameron said he liked Claire very much, and that she was easy on the eyes. But in his opinion, they had a lot of big issues and miscommunication happening. And that they differed on a lot of big things as well. Right. And he made a comment that I believe he said that Claire hears what she wants to hear. Claire could have done better in terms of working on their relationship. Claire in no way is responsible for his condition. His uh, condition occurred after they had separated. So he wanted to make that claim. And he also wanted to make clear that he felt like she had no commitment um, to take care of him. While she wanted to take care of him, he said he preferred taking care of himself. He thought that would be the better way to go. He wasn't trying to shut her out, but that was the best um, cause of action for him to get better. Right, but she felt like he was putting up a wall. Yes, and, and distancing himself from her. Right, right. Claire also said that she was very confused by what she was feeling at the time and very unaware of her feelings as well. But this is the time when Dr. Pia asked, well, why didn't she, she or reach they out. reach out to the experts? Because Claire knows full well, because she is a therapist, she didn't want them to find out how confused she really is. And disingenuous she really right. was about the process. Right. So she would go on the after party and talk ish about Cameron. I trash that it. he doesn't like her hips and bits and he's not complimentary and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And Meanwhile, at the at the ranch, that's not what's happening exactly. because he's complimenting her. But because she has this image um, issue going on, she never received it. Right. She was very, very insecure and didn't hear anything. Like like Cameron said, she heard what she he heard wanted, what she to, wanted hear to hear and didn't hear what he was what he's actually saying. So I think personally, the big manipulation here was when Claire kept the experts out of helping both of them get together because that's what she did not while, want. While trying to con us, the audience, and even the experts that things were moving along slowly, but they were moving in the right direction. Right. She went on the after party and pulled out those crocodile tears that Cameron was not complimenting her, and he told her that he wanted someone thinner and all this other stuff. She was playing us just like Brennan or Austin. She tried to shine away Dr. Pierce's question about why she didn't reach out. She goes on to say, Some of my guards were coming down after four weeks. Well, Cameron said that after four weeks, it was way too late. He was ha get, catching feelings for her. Right. And he had to uh, take the best possible option out because he knew, based on their conversation of camera, that she was not feeling him. So so I guess in order to try to salvage, uh, you know, I guess this part where she kind of looks bad on camera, she apologized to him for not understanding where she was in terms of her emotions and feelings. And having him be like all over the place and trying to interpret and deal with deal with her during, now, that, I, during that time. To me, why didn't he 
put on blast. We all know that this this chick is fake as they come. Right, and disingenuous. And when he's apologizing, he looks disingenuous as well. Yes. And I don't think he understood that. Well, I think was, his motivation was covering for her, wasn't it? Sometimes you call cover-ish. That funk is always going to be there. Mm -hmm. He said he was kind of proud of what they had done together, you know, from a vantage point. Uh, he he actually sees Claire as a more of a family member, not a wife, or specifically maybe like a sister or something. But he's like, no, nah, we don't need to continue this. I want a divorce. And she said... She said that she felt grateful for the experience and that he had given her a lot and she had grown a lot, which is more smoke. Right, right. Okay, more smoke. The couples meet up, decision day is over, and everyone has made a decision with the exception of Michael and Chloe. Mm -hmm. And the fireworks begin because you could only cover something for so long. Claire sits back and says she believes that all of the women in the show was silenced. And Cameron now is looking at her and he asks her the direct her question, damn mind. Who silenced you? Right. Who exactly? Did I and silence he, you? Right. And he asked her that uh, as a direct question right in front of everybody because he was caught off. He was legitimately caught yes. off guard. When he said, well... You were the one who you were the one who insisted that I cover you to keep secrets from being uh, Be exposed no. on camera. And she called him a liar. Pointed her finger at him, no less. That lit him up. And I don't blame him. He started telling everyone how he used to cover her, what she used to say. She was never into it. Oh, he sold he, all her tapes. One minute she'll say something, next minute. Something else is going on, and she was never into this at all. Mm -hmm. And he stated that he was the one who encouraged Brennan to go out to double date. And that in his estimation, Claire had no right talking about Brennan and Emily's um, situation. Right, especially when her own was raggedy. He got up and he just left. Because he was offended. And while they were talking, you could see Claire in the presence of anyone on the down low, staring at him and saying, uh, Cameron, and she's nodding her head, trying to silence the very same thing he talked about that she was doing. Now, there's a difference in covering the person because of love and care and concern, but silence is something altogether different. Just silence involves manipulation and control. Which was exactly what happened to Cameron, courtesy of his wife, Claire. So when he gets away from them and in a, his confessional, he says, Claire's trying to text him now to tell him not to say to say a whole lot and i would say at the reunion um kevin frazier should ask can i see, see the receipts phone? those texts will tell the story and blow her up and without having seen any of that any of those receipts or anything else uh just my opinion I believe Cameron. Yeah, I do Cam not believe Cameron is more this. believable than she is and she was so offended that she tried to give this stuff up and he refused, and she was brokenhearted on the after party, weeping those crocodile tears. Meanwhile, Cameron is not who she wants at all. Yeah, no. it's like she wanted to convince us that she'll give it a legitimate try and all that when she knew she would. She doesn't think the grown folks can see through her act. And because Cameron got upset and she called him a liar, he decided, well, well this is... This is going to prove who was silenced. Claire got exposed the way she did. This girl was not in the game. And while she may pretend that one thing, something else was going on behind the scenes. And not only that, too, she got the nerve to get into other people's business and counsel other people when her business is raggedy. I think for the reunion... Kevin Frazier should ask her, ask him for the no, tapes. He, he should just sprint it receipts. up. He should just sprint it up and give it to everybody. And highlighted in yellow. You have a good one. God bless you and keep you. And we appreciate your time and love. And let me say this too. I wish Cameron and Claire the best, but I, I tell you what, 
you know, you have to, when you look back at this, um, you know, it's going to be obvious who tried to give it their best and who didn't. Yes. It's and be Claire obvious. did not give this her best. Because she was never attracted to Cameron to begin with. Exactly. So she fronted the, the entire the entire season. Yeah, I would have respected her more if she had said that I'm not attracted to this dude, and and I need tools to find out how I can get beyond it, rather than the skullduggery she tried to perpetrate. We used to say that back in the college days, right? You was perpetrating. That's exactly. exactly what she was doing. Exactly. Huh? Uh-huh. Perpetrating. Good word. Appreciate you, brother. Have a good one. Bye-bye. See y'all.